purely through law, more of light and it would be a very informative session uh, so i would request today's speaker anjanay garu to start off with the presentation because uh, i don't want uh, uh, more of time to be wasted because there are so many uh, attendees who are eagerly waiting for the talk uh, over to dr anjanay garu for his presentation sir over to you uh good evening to all the members of acci and all other engineering colleagues i thank um, my distinguished it's okay no i can you want to share sir i'm not sure first uh, oh, okay. yeah uh, i thank engineer kashiram chairman acci hyderabad center and other office bearers for giving me this opportunity to give the presentation on design of bridge substructures and foundations now i will just uh, share my screen for the presentation this one this one yeah, yeah. today's presentation is on design of substructures and foundations for bridges uh the importance of found foundations in a bridge or any other structure is all uh, known to everybody so there all the structures including bridges require a system called foundation to transmit all the loads from the substructure from the structure safely to underlying underlying soil or rock in that it is evident from the above definition that foundation is the most important part of the bridge Uh, foundations may be classified based on where the load is transmitted to the ground as shallow foundations which again consists of open foundation the open foundation is a definition is you know where this uh, depth of foundation is by the width of foundation is about less than 1 or somewhat and some of the examples of open foundation are isolated footings combined footings raft foundations etc then there is some uh, some kind of a special foundation called shaft foundation these are used to support lightly loaded structures like compound walls supports for electrical poles highway signage boards etc they are designed as short piles taking into consideration the passive pressure mobilized this is like this this is a type of uh, force the diagram and then you have deep foundations which consists of well foundations pile foundations and mono pile foundations these are also again a specialist kind of thing which is coming into the market nowadays then this is a, a well foundation which consists of a you know substructure well cap and then top plug sand filling again bottom plug this is a, this is a thing and then pile foundations pile foundations everybody knows there's a uh, pile foundations and then then this mono pile foundation this is a you know where the whole structure is uh, supported on one single pile of about the diameter of about Two to one and a half meters, like that. Of course, these are not used uh, in the not much in the bridges, uh, where river bridges, but mostly in uh, flyovers, city flyovers, metros, and all. The whole of uh, uh, Dubai Metro is supported on a structure is supported on a single pile like this, uh, a two and a half meter diameter of uh, pile. The selection of type of foundation to be adopted in a bridge project is primarily based on river discharge cover level of the river below the bed level type of soil or availability of in erodible rock strata and the depth of that rock strata etc these are the criteria based on which whether we go for a well foundation or a, a pile foundation or a shallow open footing type of foundation for example in a place like hyderabad 
we mostly go for only open foundation because typically rock is available at a, a very shallow depth. Whereas in so many other area uh, places like Chennai, all those places there, uh, we say about them, there we need to go for pile foundations. Then shallow foundations are adopted in minor rivers, streams where the discharge is small, where inerodible bed is available at shallow depths like if rock is available at about four to five meters below the bed, then we can go for uh, shallow foundation like open foundations. In minor bridges, shallow foundations like raft foundations are adopted, even if inerodible bed is not available at shallow depths, by making the bed inerodible using raft foundation with upstream downstream uh, floor protection using rigid apron curtain walls flexible aprons by using these rigid apron curtain walls and flexible apron, aprons we make the bed uh, non scoverable so thereby it becomes fit for go for a raft foundation so this is also adopted in uh, uh, minor uh, minor bridges or uh, uh, very small uh, span bridges also, we do this. The, uh, the, to do a proper design of a bridge project, project and especially for foundations for the bridge, you require hydraulic investigations as well as subsurface exploration. The, the hydraulic investigations are required the, to get the catchment area of a river at a bridge from which rainwater is discharged in the stream at the bridge location is determined using topo sheets available with Survey of India. Or nowadays, even uh, softwares are available uh, using uh, Google Earth uh, levels and all softwares are also available. Earlier, you know, we used to do with uh, topo sheets prepared by Survey of India. The design, the design discharge is calculated based on the rainfall intensity in the region, distribution of rainfall in time, space, duration of rainfall, etc. To, to provide for an adequate margin of safety, the bridge shall be designed for a larger discharge than over the discharge over the design discharge as given below. These are given in some guidelines in the IRC code. IRC 6. So we just follow this to arrive at the design discharge in a stream. From the design discharge, river bed slope and cross section, the linear waterway required is calculated using Lacey's equation. Sometimes it is economical and safe to keep the bridge width less than the required linear waterway. This, uh, this results in scour of the bed when the bed consists of erodible strata like sand, silt, etc. Et the highest flood level is calculated for this linear waterway and the scoured bed level. The mean depth of scour below HFL for natural channel flowing over scourable bed can be calculated using the following equation given in the code the DSM, uh, this is given in IRC6. The, we use this to calculate this. Then the maximum cover level is obtained uh, using the above average cover level. You get average cover level, then the locals actually around the, uh, around the obstructions, the like uh, our peers and all, there will be a local cover actually, uh, which is over and above the overall bed cover. So this is this local cover in the immediate vicinity of the foundation is more, and the same are specified in IRC 78 as twice two DSM for peers. That means two times the average discharge, average cover level is used for the peers. 1.27 DSM is used for design of abutments. Then, uh, apart, apart from this hydraulic investigation, we require subsoil exploration 
uh, another important requirement of the design of the foundation is subsoil investigation. The objectives of subsoil investigations are to determine the characteristics of the existing geomaterial like soil, rock, bed material in water courses, etc. And then to determine the type of foundation to be adopted, whether shallow foundation or a deep foundation. In deep foundation, whether you, you whether to go for a well foundation or pile foundation, these are all uh, are based on the soil investigation. The, the number of tests are conducted on the soils and rocks obtained in the subsoil exploration like standard penetration test, SPT, test on undisturbed samples, soils, and disturbed soils, core recovery for rocks, and uh, rock quality designation, RQD, for the rocks, unconfined compression test on rock, UC, UCS, then plate load test on the rocks. Based on the above, the selection of a foundation is done. We obtain the following information from the hydraulic data, design high flood level, free boat to be adopted based on the design discharge of the river, designs cover level of the pier abutments, velocity of the flow, and we obtain the following information from subsoil investigation. Depth on type of soil strata, depth at which rock or inerodible strata is available, SPC of the soil below the cover level, SPC of the rock. This, this information we get, and based on this, based on the above information, type of foundation and depth of foundation below bed level, cover level, is adopted among the following type of foundations shallow foundations, raft foundation with protection against scour, or individual foundations which go below scour level or which are uh, put, uh, which are founded on the rock, or deep foundation like well foundations and pile foundations. And the criteria for selection of footing. Raft, raft foundation with bed protection against cover. This type of foundations are adopted in minor bridges with raft foundation just below the bed level. The foundation is protected against the scouring action of the water flow by using appropriately designed upstream downstream aprons. These are dealt with in IRC SP 13 code. Individual foundation below pier and abutment. This type of foundation is adopted when soft hard rock is available at shallow depths below river bed level. In case of flyovers and viaducts, when semi disintegrated rock, soft hard rock, or hard soil strata is available at shallow depths below ground level, then, then also we use go for uh, individual foundation, open foundations. Then, well foundations. Well foundations are used in the following cases. The river discharge, velocity of the flow, and scour levels are very high, as the case in all the major river bridges, river, rivers in plains, as, as against, of course, rivers in uh, rocky uh, stratas, like uh, in any rocky area. There, uh, even if the river discharge is very high, we may go for open foundation sometimes. But majority of the times, we go for well foundation. Where Competent file foundation foundation strata like rock is available only at very high depths below bed. Because of the very high depths below the bed and all the all the time presence of uh, the water, we will not be able to do for go for open for open foundations here. We need to go for well foundations or maybe pile foundations, which we will deal later. Where predominantly cohesionless soil. Clay soils are available right up to very high depths. You, uh, you get only clay or uh, sandy soils. There also we go for uh, well foundations. Well foundations are designed taking advantage of the passive earth pressure that can develop and which helps in the stability of the well foundation against the high water current forces that can develop. Well foundations are not popular nowadays because of the relative lack of control over the progress of well sinking, tilts and shifts that develop during sinking. Typically, 
correction of well tilt and shift take takes well over three to six months time, and sometimes the whole project gets delayed because of the selection of well foundation. That is why nowadays uh, most of the designers or uh, contractors are uh, adopting well found uh, well foundations rather than well foundations. But uh, sometimes it, it becomes inevitable to go for well foundations. Even pile foundations will not be possible where because the cover levels are very high. Then pile foundations. There are a lot of varieties of pile foundations like precast driven piles, board precast piles, board cast in situ piles, etc. Only board cast in situ piles are being adopted for both bridges as well as flyovers, viaducts in India for the following reasons. With the advent of the high capacity pile boring rotary boring machines capable of rotary drilling, the speed of construction improves tremendously. These can be adopted in city situations where high width on road cannot be barricaded for open foundations because uh, to take care of the traffic. The well, uh, typically the pile foundations require less uh, barricading width in, a row, in an existing road than a open foundation. Just for this reason also, sometimes we go for uh, pile foundations. Even in situation of high cover levels, high horizontal loads are being transmitted with the advent of board piles of 1500 mm dia and above. <coughs> these are uh, uh, these machines capable of uh, having board piles of 1500 diameters and even 1800 diameters are available nowadays. And then the concept of monopile is being adopted where it has all the advantages of well foundation, but without the disadvantages of well foundations, like uh, disadvantage of speed of construction, control of tilt and shifts. Because these monopiles are very good and very fast. Uh, compared to a well foundation, they are very fast and they don't, this problem of tilt and shifts are uh, not there. And they take even less obstruction of the existing road than a pile foundation where we normally go for four numbers of 1200 dia or six numbers of 1200 dia piles and the pile cap and which all requires a lot of uh, road to be blocked. So that is why these monopiles have come nowadays. Then <coughs> the, we have finished the type of uh, foundations normally adopted in uh, bridges. Then we go for substructures. The bridge substructure consists of pier cap, pier, abutment cap, abutment along with dirt wall, return wall, etc. So this is a typical uh, minor bridge, wherein this is an abutment, this is a pier, and this is a wing wall, and this is a backup wall. These are the typical uh, approach embankment. These are all shown here, and then. Pier cap transmits the loads coming from the bearings and superstructure onto the pier. Pier caps are of the following types. Short width pier cap, which are mainly used for box girder superstructure. The ratio of the depth to outstanding length of the pier face is usually less than one. And in which case they are designed as corbels. So this is a typical uh, uh, corbel uh, pier cap. See, because of this, so even though the whole superstructure is of uh, this much weight, the here the bearings are are only very uh, not much apart. Whereas uh, compared to a girder bridge, this requires a smaller width pier cap, and wherein this compared to the pier, the pier cap width is also not much. So we go for a uh, corbel design for this. Whereas when you go for a, uh, a girder bridge, you typically require a long pier cap. So this is the type of pier cap that, and this is, uh, this is just used, uh, this is designed as a, just a 
cantilever beam uh, from here. It's designed as a cantilever beam. Then this is a, a typical pier cap, which we have used in Hyderabad for a, a six lane bridge at Sheikh Pet. This is a kind of a pier cap that comes. Here we have, we have designed this as a uh, PSC, uh, PSC pier cap. And this is a uh, same thing, this pier cap, what I had shown in the earlier, this thing. In fact, we have done a precast. This is a precast pier cap of uh, length 23 meters and uh, height 2.75 meter height. And this typically weighs about 220 tons. We had done this uh, precast caps. And in fact, there's just uh, this, uh, this flyover is going to be inaugurated on 30th of this uh, 30th December. Then the pier is the main bending element transmitting the superstructure loads onto the ground through the foundation. Piers are of the type of uh, uh, following types. RCC single shaft pier of circular, rectangular, or other shapes like this. These shapes are required to reduce the obstruction to the river uh, water flow. This one and then this semicircular cut waters and these things are these adopted to compare to this type of a shape. This will obstruct very, uh, this will give very less obstruction to the water flow. Thereby, you know, scovering action, everything is reduced. These are the typical type of uh, foundation, uh, the piers that are adopted. Apart from this, wall type of piers. A wall pier is, is a, a pier where this length is more than four times the, this uh, width. This is the type of this thing. And then we also use hollow piers, hollow piers of rectangular or circular. Typically, these are, these, are, uh, these hollow piers are adopted where the piers are very tall, like something like 30 meters, 40 meters tall. There, the idea of this uh, hollow is that we get, uh, for the given area of cross-section, we get large I value, I value or Z value, moment of inertia. That is the, that's why uh, where, the, where the piers are very tall, like something like 30 meters, 40 meters, we adopt this kind of a uh, piers. Then the portal piers. This is a typical portal pier. The, the, these are used for wide bridges flyovers where the, where the utilization of space below the flyover is not very constrained, not a constraint. See, because here typically this much of space cannot be used for the uh, at grade traffic. Where that is a constraint, we, we go for a single pier with a large pier cap like what I've shown in the earlier, where this, uh, uh, this is not a problem, we go for this portal piers. These portal piers are actually uh, more economical and uh, very good for seismic load transmission. Also, the, we adopt this kind of things, uh, portal piers. Then abutments. Abutment is the end element of the bridge substructure adjacent to the approach filling. They are of the following types. Cantilever abutment, counterfort abutment, box type of abutment where it also acts as return wall, pair type of abutments used in flyovers with RE wall behind. So this is a typical, what we call abutment, uh, pair type of abutment. Here is a Portal type of portal pier type of abutment with RE wall behind. This is in fact this is the most uh, one of the most popular uh, type of uh, abutments used in the city flyovers. Whereas for a river bridges and all, we go for, and the river bridges where this uh, depth from ground uh, foundation level to the bridge top is something like 15 meters, 20 meters, and all. 
we have to go we have to necessarily go for this counterfort of counterfort type abutment this counterfort abutment consists of a vertical wall behind which soil filling is there and then it is like a t beam typical uh, cantilever t beam kind of thing uh, only thing is uh, t beams this uh, t bottom is in compression here this is in tension actually so this these are the counterforts a number of counterforts with a vertical wall and then on which this superstructure is uh, supported and then this is the whole uh, soil is uh, uh, supported also with the this vertical wall then this is a typical plan of a counterfort uh, abutment you see this is whole thing is at the the back filling and here here the girders are supported and these are the counterforts and this is a long return wall sometimes because of the height of this return wall we cannot design we have to design these also like a counterfort wall this is another counterfort wall this is one wall this is all the three sides is counterfort wall the whole thing consists of the uh, abut uh, counterfort abutment and with a return wall this is uh, typically used where the abutments are about 20 meters height like that the same thing is uh, the section of a box type of abut box type of there otherwise you can go for box type of abutments wherein you know these uh, these are the you go for this uh, end wall as well as a box compartments these compartments are filled with the soil with the back filling soil and then this acts as a return wall also this is another type of abutment this is uh, also used where uh, the abutment height is about 20 25 meters then now the the other things are all uh, the till now we have dealt with you know different types of foundations and uh, substructures what kind of things are there and what is the criteria for uh, adopting different type now we will uh, briefly deal with the design of the bridge foundations then these uh, foundations are required for to be designed to transmit all the forces of nature operating on the bridge structure safely to the earth strata they are required to be designed for the following loads dead loads comprising of self weight of various bridge components like superstructure substructure uh, foundation etc is the dead loads and then superimposed dead loads what we call these are like where bridge bearing port railing crash barrier curbs utility lines like water pipelines power cables which go along along on the bridge these are the all called superimposed dead loads live loads like vehicles pedestrian loads along with the associated horizontal loads like braking centrifuge centrifugal forces in case of curved bridges and flyovers then water current forces of the river buoyancy of the low buoyancy of the loads due to submergence in submergence in water impact of floating debris or vessels nowadays lot of uh, uh, bridges are being uh, river bridges are being uh, done uh, with a lo long spans so that uh, these vessels can also uh, go typically they require you know we go for about 80 meters span 100 meters span for the passage of the vessels impact of the vehicles in the case of flyovers and viaducts wind loads of the on the structure temperature effects seismic forces at pressure including live loads are charged in abutment foundations etc the combination of the above loads along with the specified load factors as specified in irc 62017 to be considered for the design of foundations they are uh, for, for the very very verification of equilibrium this table forces and along with the 
load factors are given in this table of IRC6 for verification of ULS strength, ultimate load. These combinations are given in B, this table B2 of the IRC6. Serviceability verification is based on B3. Checking of base pressure and design of foundations as per table four. These are the various combinations that we use for in IRC and they are given in IRC6. The typical design issues that come in the pier design. Solid pier or rectangular pier, circular pier, or annular shape pier. If the annular shape of the pier, that is uh, hollow piers, minimum wall thickness shall be 300 mm. Wall type of pier, where uh, the width is uh, more than four times the thickness. And then the loads that come on the, uh, these are axial loads combined with biaxial bending. That means bending moments in the longitudinal direction and transverse direction. Sometimes uh, less vertical load with, uh, with the attendant bending moments are critical. Uh, uh, critical because uh, as you see some, uh, we, we, are, we know also, uh, uh, SP16 charts, you get the, if you see uh, here also, uh, if the vertical load is very less for the given bending moment, if the vertical load is less, we will require more reinforcement. These are the, some of the issues that come in the design. And in case of surface re recesses, minimum cover to be maintained. See, this is uh, in, uh, in piers of the in the cities in the piers, we re, we do some slight uh, designs using uh, some uh, recesses or protrusions. So there also this minimum cover is to be taken from the uh, recesses uh, level. So these are the some kind of uh, all these things are to be these are the issues to be uh, taken care of while doing pier design. And then prefer to concrete in one go with trimming. See nowadays, uh, in fact, a lot of uh, flyovers and city flyovers, they, they specify that the whole pier as well as pier cap is to be done in one go. So that, that is also is done, sorry. Mm. So this is a pier cap. Pier and pier cap is done at one go using a tremi concrete, tremi pipe, and then we use a, we do, and then this, uh, the shuttering design is also done based on the rate of concreting, depending on the rate of concreting, and we get the pressures that the concrete uh, assert on the, on the shuttering. So this shuttering is specially designed to take care of the uh, the forces that come when we when you try to do the whole peer peer cap in you know maybe maybe about five six hours time. Then issues related to peer cap design. The peer caps are normally designed as corbels brackets due to short cantilever, like I have shown earlier. So the, they are designed as a corbels. Long pier caps can be designed as uh, cantilever beams, and if the length is uh, uh, length span is very much, instead of uh, RCC, they can be designed as precious concrete pier caps also, like I had shown uh, uh, the earlier exam uh, earlier uh, figure. Then longitudinal forces cause torsion in the pier cap, and law. So longitudinal forces like you know breaking forces and all breaking forces, centrifugal forces, they cause torsion in the pier cap. That is also has to be accounted for. Like this. See, you have a pier, then when you have a longitudinal force like this, this gives rise to apart from the bending moment, this gives rise to a torsion in the cap. Then bearing pedestals, these are the bearing pedestals. They should be high enough to accommodate boards. 
Nowadays, we are going for uh, all these pot PTFE bearings, which are to be fixed with bolts. So, so this this uh, uh, bearing pedestals height is taken such that these bolts can be accommodated within uh, within these uh, pedestals pedestal height. Otherwise, we will need to give uh, you know we cannot concrete this uh, cap, uh, pier cap properly. Normally, this pier cap is uh, done once, and then this uh, this is done a second time. And then within this only bolts come, then it is convenient for the whole pier cap to be uh, concreted. And then this uh, fine work can be done later after you know taking uh, where the bolts are coming, uh, this one, this is what is done. Then these are some of the hodel provisions uh, for the design of the corbels. These are given in uh, 112. IRC one one SP one one two. I think this uh, we can uh, skip this. This you can get from that code. And then recommend reinforcement in a typical corbel. They can be like this. In fact, main thing is in the corbel, the uh, shear reinforcement. Normally we keep it as a word like this. Where here we it, it requires to be provided in a horizontal uh, link, horizontal direction. So this is a, this is the corbel type of uh, the, sometimes if the if the this is more slightly more we require horizontal stirrups as well as vertical stirrups or sometimes like this inclined stirrups. These are type of uh, arrangements in the corbels. Then some. Uh, we just give some uh, typical design examples what is done. This is just based on the above principles, a sample design of different type of foundations designed in our office are shown and explained below. I think the, the, uh, depending on the time, I think already we have, okay, we have time. So open foundation on rocky strata. This, this is a typical, this is an example. Uh, we have done a flyover in Hyderabad. The typical span arrangement is four span continuous structure, four into 30 meter span. This is a four lane flyover with deck width of 16.6 .6 meters consisting of six numbers of precast, free tension girders, and an RCC deck slab. This is, uh, this is a flyover that, that is done in road number 45 of uh, Jubilee Hills. Uh, here in this rocky strata is typically available at two and a half to three meters below road level, and hence open foundations are adopted. Since the foundation strata is rock, the foundation is designed for a part of this foundation to lose contact with foundation strata as specified in clause so and so of IRC 78. That means here we have allowed the tension. A part of the uh, foundation is losing contact with the soil or rock. This is a typical uh, cross section. Six girders are used, and the total width is 16.6 .6 meters, and the span is four, four into 30. And this is the uh, typical precast pretension girder, top and bottom flanges of 900 mm width and web thickness is 200 mm, and the overall height is 1750. And this is the pier cap of 15.6 meters by two meter width, and the depth of uh, two meter depth. And the pier is three meters by 1.5 meter uh, rectangular uh, RCC section. This pier cap is also RCC pier cap, but this is a precast, precast RCC pier cap, which is cast uh, on the road. And then after pier foundation, is, pier foundation is done, it is brought and kept above and, and this uh, is grouted. Typical loads, 
summary of dead loads and superstructure uh, superimposed dead loads that come on the pier are given here about 9000 9, 9, kilonewtons is a dead load and the sidl is this and then uh, at the pier bottom these are the bend moments in the transverse direction moment in the longitudinal direction and then sulfate of soil on the backfill on the soil backfill on the footing is calculated and then this is a, a little interesting because this is a 4 into 30 meter uh, continuous four span continuous structure you get a secondary loads secondary effects like typical uh, these are the type of uh, secondary effects that you get uh, load due to differential shrinkage because precast girders are uh, uh, assembled on on top of the piers pier caps and dex lab is done later cast in situ and because of the age difference between the precast girders and the cast in situ dex lab you have a differential shrinkage which gives rise to up and down loads on the piers so there is a negative there is an up, upward load of 145 kilonewtons here and then temperature rise and temperature fall also causes an upward downward loads on the pier cap and support settlement because of the four span continuous when some one of the supports uh, goes down you get an upward loads of 530 kilonewtons then dead loads also simply supported to continuous dead loads are made they, that also give rise to about up and down loads and then the pre-stressing force see when the pre-stressed concrete pre-stressed pre-tension girders are kept and later they are made continuous and because of the long-term losses of pre-stress you get a uh, secondary loads like upward down there's a downward load of uh, as much as about 953 kilonewtons that means about 95 tons of downward load is up is a you get because of the pre-stressing load. But some of the other things, your dead load gives upward load, this gives a downward load, and then uh, differential shrinkage also gives an upward load. Because of that overall effect, this is the overall effect. That means there's a, overall there's a downward load of about four tons, and a bending moment of, uh, transverse bending moment of 143 kilonewton per meter. So these are also to be, these are also are to be assessed in a continuous uh, four span, three span continuous structures. Then live loads. Summary of live loads, including breaking centrifugal forces, they're calculated. These are the vertical loads and corresponding uh, bend, bending moments, longitudinal bending moments and transverse bending moments at the pier top, at the footing bottom and footing top. So these are also are assessed. And because this is a, a live load and four span continuous, live load can, can be present in a, you know, uh, may not be just above the pier. It can be, is a, is a moving load. It can be anywhere uh, in these four spans. So there, because of this, we have to go for a different type of load combinations. That means typically a load combination with uh, vertical load maximum and the corresponding bending moments and vertical load minimum and the corresponding bending moments and when the transfer transverse moment is maximum and this is a correspondent vertical load corresponding vertical loads and when the longitudinal bending moment is maximum and the corresponding vertical loads these are so many combinations are to be considered then after this uh, vehicle loads the wind loads are to be considered. The wind loads are given uh, typically for a, uh, in IRC, they are given for a basic wind speed of 33 kilometers per second. Whereas in uh, this project, which is in citizen Hyderabad, the wind speed is 44. So this is uh, accordingly, it is uh, multiplying factors adopted for the uh, wind speeds and wind pressures. 
wind pressures are calculated and then when the wind is acting like this on a superstructure this is a wind, when wind is acting these are the lever arms that are calculated where is the cg of the wind load that is acting and the lever arm with respect to this uh, top of the uh, top of the foundation and bottom of the foundation is calculated and then the wind on the pier cap the wind on the pier all these are calculated and then uh, with the lever arms with this you get the transverse moment and uh, irc code says 25% uh, of this transverse moment is to be taken in the lo uh, longitudinal direction in the other direction as well as some upward loads are also are there all these things are also to be considered so with this a typical uh, summary of wind loads will be like this the vertical load on the superstructure there is an upward load on the superstructure i mean because of the superstructure the upward load there is an actually upward load on the pier and pier uh, pier on the foundation and then there is a the horizontal loads in the longitudinal direction and transverse direction and then the because of that bending moments in the trans longitudinal direction and transverse direction and live load on the pier cap and pier they also are calculated and all these are summarized like this then seismic loads so since this is a zone 2 we have gone for uh, this kind of a uh, horizontal seismic coefficient method see we have calculated seismic coefficients in the transverse direction and longitudinal direction uh, typical pier uh, we calculate ixx iyy of the pier and then uh, using this clause of irc6 uh, seismic coefficients are calculated both in the transverse direction and longitudinal direction here a typical for this uh, particular flyover we got a, a seismic transverse uh, factor of 0.75 and longitudinal seismic factor of 0.22 so we have calculated those things Th these are all uh, using these equations we calculate the uh, time period and then uh, and then from the time period sa by g and then for the uh, the seismic coefficients are calculated and then these coefficient uh, using the seismic coefficients seismic loads are calculated and then these are all tabulated like this and then then we go go, go for a foundation design so here this foundation can have a vertical load and then it can be there the transfer moment in the transverse direction and moment in the longitudinal direction and this is summary of loads at the bottom of the footings based on all different loads dead load sidl pre stressing and secondary effects live load wind load seismic load these are all tabulated like this and then this is section properties of the foundation is done the foundation adopted is about 5.5 meters by 7 meters in this here and then we calculated we calculate the z values and then we typically use uh, p by a ml by z del mt by z t and then calculate the bending uh, the base pressures at the four corners of the open foundation here we got a maximum base pressure of 756 and a minimum of 124 that means there is an uplift here uh, uplift here then this is the minimum base pressure is minus 24 maximum hence there is a loss of contact area in the footing base pressure shall be redistributed so using uh, some formulas given in uh, this foundation design by wayne tang we calculate we calculated using those formulas that 7.7 percent of the area of the foundation is lost contact with the soil and then because of the, this one lost contact read we redistribute the pressure using service formulas and then we got this pressure of 775 
that means earlier the, the maximum maximum of 756 got transformed to 775 and this is less than the allowable pressure this is what we calculate and then these are the charts in that uh, tank book which these are these charts are given typically in our office we use this to calculate the uh, tension area and the redistributed uh, foundation stress etc then we do the structural design of the foundation that is the uh, depth of foundation required depth of foundation required reinforcement these are done for ULS case like this and then these are all general formulas here this thing and then with this we calculate the reinforcement required we that uh, required reinforcement was 18000 080 mm square minimum area of steel there is a portal clause that minimum required is 17454 so we have adopted 24 tar, tar 25 at 150 centers which comes to 23000 mm square which is more than this 18000 here this side is 18000 is required and uh, in the transverse direction, we require uh, we require fifteen thousand. Here also we have we have adopted eighteen thousand. This is how you we design and put the reinforcement. Then we have to check for check the footing for shear. Usually shear does not govern as we provide sufficient footing depth to avoid shear stirrups. However, following checks shall be done to satisfy the shear criteria. Check of one-way shear at D by two from face of the pier. Check for punching shear at the face of the pier. Uh, these are explained in the following example. Designing, design of footing for SLS. Footing shall also be checked for stresses in concrete and steel in rare combination and crack widths shall be checked in Classy permanent combination. These are the combinations given in IRC 112. We do this. We, are, we need to do this. And then we go for a design of PR. So, as I told you, the, we had adopted a RCC PR of 3 meters by 1.5 meters. This along the along the traffic it is 1.5 meters, and in the transverse direction is 3 meters. Then here also, summary of the loads at the bottom of the pier. Uh, earlier, we had done this summary at the bottom of the foundation. Now we do the summary of these loads at the bottom of the pier. A typical uh, table is this. And then, then this load, the, the combination of the above loads along with the specified load factors as specified in table B2 and B3 of IRC for ULS and SLS are used. And then we need to check for slenderness effect also. Uh, see here, this pier, this, uh, pier is about 9.5 meter height. Then effective length in the longitudinal direction, we have to take it as 1.4 times the L, 13 meters. And effective length of the pier in transverse direction, 2.3 L. Actually, in the transverse direction, it is a pure cantilever. So we go for this 2.3 factor as given in uh, IRC 112. In the longitudinal direction, since this is a four span continuous structure, though it is supported on bearings, still we get a, some uh, more stability. So hence, we go for only 1.4 times the L for the getting the effective length. This is based on the table 11.1 of IRC 112. We go for this and then radius of gyration and slenderness ratio. Here in the transverse direction, we got uh, 30.69. And in the longitudinal direction, we got 25.21, which are 
uh, both are uh, less than 50 short column, but this is based on the earlier code. Now IRC 112 is a different criteria specified. So once you get this slenderness, uh, this uh, slenderness uh, ratios, we check for second order effects by limiting slenderness ratio. There are some, this formula is there. Then we calculate all this, uh, this A, B, C by all this formula. And then we get limiting slenderness ratio in the longitudinal direction is 78.73. And in the transverse direction, 57.73. But since our, our slenderness ratios are less than this, our peer is a, not a slender peer. We need not consider second order effects. If this, if the, the for example, 9.5 meter is our height of the peer, if that peer were to be about 20 meter height and we adopt only three meters by 1.5 meters uh, section, we, we would mostly these things would have been more than this. So hence, then we need to go for uh, second order bending moments. We, cal we have to calculate second order bending moment, add to the primary bending moments and design for the, the total uh, moment. So the structural design of the PR. Here uh, SLS checks are done for stresses and ULS checks are done for moment interaction ratio or capacity ratio. Summary of uh, stresses and moment interaction ratio is given below. These results are uh, extracted from AdSec software. So this is what we are using in our office, but there are some uh, number of softwares out there. Then, then, sorry. We have, in this pair of three meters by 1.5 meters, we have used this, this reinforcement. Totally uh, 24, 25, 22, 20s, 12, 25s. I will show you later the arrangement of this reinforcement. Area of steel is 29,688, which is 0.66% of the area of concrete. Uh, see, this is in uh, uh, in the building code, IS456, normally a minimum percentage of steel is given as 0.8%. But in IRC, it is only about 0.3%. We can go for only 0.3%. Not more. And typically, most of the time, we design uh, for you know less than 0.8 percent, and uh, rarely more than about 1.5 percent steel is used. Not like buildings. Normally, typically in buildings, we go for a minimum of 0.8 percent and uh, maximum of about even uh, you know 4 percent is the limit. We go for at least 3 percent is commonly we go. And uh, because those buildings are multi-story buildings. Later on, we reduce, keep reducing the percentage of steel as you go on a higher story. Here, uh, this is what we have used, 0.66%, and then check for minimum steel. So there's a clause. If you see here, uh, minimum steel is only uh, 002 is the one clause, and another clause 004. So less, that means only 0.4% is the minimum. Whereas we have used 0.66%. And then this is the type of arrangement that we have put. If you see here, these are all bigger diameter than smaller diameter, bigger diameter like that. The whole actual mapping is done. Uh, how, whichever uh, reinforcement is kept where, where actual location. And this software takes care of all those uh, things. And then the governing ULS check, if you see, this is the governing uh, with a vertical load of about uh, 9780 nine, KN and ML of 11,000 and MT of 4,000, resultant bending moment 12,000 and capacity is, is 15,000. For 0.66%, this capacity is 15,000. That means utilization ratio is 0.8, less than one. We now typically go, we can go up to one. We typically go even up to 0 0.9, 0 0.95 like that. Uh, you can, you can. There's nothing like that. You can go up to one. And then in SLS check, 
stress in concrete is 9.56 we got against allowable 19.2 stress in steel 122 against allowable 400 actually 400 is allowable allowed if you uh, if you go for uh, fatigue check if you do not want to do fatigue check the allowable stress in sls is 300 0.6. But otherwise, if you if you do go for this, uh, fatigue check, it can be 0 0.8 for any damage. Then crack with here we did not get any is uncracked. We got an uncracked section. If you get a crack uh, with it should be less than 0 0.8. Hence the pier section is safe and the reinforcement provided is adequate. So this is that uh, uh, typical actual uh, actual. Uh, drawing, approved drawing for the foundation and the pier. These are the arrangement of the stress, uh, stirrups and all. These are all given like this. I think it's not very clear, only unless you have a full screen, then only it will be clear. Uh, so this is the typical drawing. Actually, I have just uh, displayed the drawing. Then we just go for a well, for, how, how much time do I have, uh, sir? How much time can I take? Sir, take your, uh, take your own time, sir. No problem. Uh, another uh, half an hour is okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, right, right. Pillai, sir, is it okay? Okay, sir, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then, uh, well foundation. Uh, this is a, a, a bridge uh, that we have done in Assam, a river bridge in Assam. With simply supported spans of 42.3 meters uh, centers. The, st the uh, strata is sandy up to 40 to 50 meters below bed level. Hence, well foundation of with 7 meter dia well is adopted under the piers. The well is designed taking advantage of the passive earth pressure that is developed below the scour level to counter all the horizontal forces including seismic forces in a zone 5 area, along with the associated hydrodynamic forces. In a, in a seismic, during a seismic event, even the uh, water, water current forces also, also enhanced, and uh, you, you need to take these hydrodynamic forces. In fact, typically in a zone 5 area, this hydrodynamic force is more than two times the water current force. So overall, you need to go for about three times the water current forces during a seismic event. It was also considered in the design. So this is a, a, the data for the, worked out a, the example. Diameter of the circular pier, two meter dia we have adopted. Diameter of the well, outer diameter is uh, seven meters and inner diameter is 4.9. So, so styling thickness, that means wall thickness is 1.05. Then diameter of the well cap is seven meters. Thickness of the well cap is 2.25. Length of the well below well cap is 23.75 meters, which is what we have gone up to the foundation level. Depth of the scour level in the seismic case is 9.5 meters below well cap. See, out of this 23.75 meters that we have uh, put the well about top 10 meters is covered only another 13 meters is the uh, uh, the foundation the soil uh, is there up to the foundation level hfl above well cap is 4.4.15 meters spc at foundation level is 90 ton per square meter this is a seismic zone 5 so this is a typical arrangement of a the well the total superstructure we have got the width is about is a 12 meter width this is the width is 12 meters we have gone for four numbers of precast post tension girders and over which uh, rcc uh, dex lab is done and then these are the seismic arresters in zone 4 and 5 we necessarily need to uh, use uh, seismic arresters as a device for anti uh, uh, detachment of the superstructure. 
So we have used this uh, transverse direction and transverse and longitudinal seismic arresters. And this is a pier, the pier cap, 12 meter wide pier cap, and a two meter dia pier, and seven meter dia well. Then type of loads to be considered, dead load, SIDL, buoyancy effect, live load, and mainly main important thing is seismic loads in three directions, longitudinal, transverse, and vertical. Since this is a zone five, even vertical direction, seismic in vertical direction also we need to consider, we have done that, and hydrodynamic forces. And then of course, all those calculations I have not given. Uh, so bridge is designed for two conditions, HFL condition, high flood level condition, and low water level condition. And under both the conditions, seismic, and whereas non-nine seismic, all these four, all these combinations are done. So we, we are just showing the governing, seismic case is governing the design, and hence only this case is presented. Here, loads due to dead load, SIDL, live load, e, se seismic load, water current forces, hydrodynamic forces, are, are vertical load is 27,656 kilometers. That means something like 22,800 tons is the vertical load. And total bending moment is uh, 55,313 kilonewton meter. That means uh, 5,550 5, 5, 5, ton meters. To this uh, moment due to tilt and shift is to be added, which is about 8, 835 ton meters. With all these things, for the foundation level that we considered, moment due to passive pressure is 1,60,172 kilonewton meter, much higher than the, all this bending moment. Whereas net loads at the bottom of the foundation is a vertical load of this 27,656, and moment is zero. That means completely all these seismic moments, hydrodynamic moments of almost uh, 5,500 ton meters uh, is there, whereas this is 16,000 ton meters of passive earth pressure is developed. So there is no net uh, bending mom moment on the foundation bottom. So hence, base pressure is only P by A, which comes to 719 kilonewton per meter square. Allowable is 900, and which can be enhanced by 1.25 times uh, during seismic. Allowable is uh, uh, 1125, less than 790. This is the thing. And then design of staining. Actually, calculation of critical section for staining design. Staining is that wall, that wall, uh, well foundation wall. The, the position of the critical section for, from the top of the well shall be calculated by equating the horizontal forces, external forces to the passive earth pressure to get zero shear point. Because the our bending moment is the maximum when the shear is zero. So we calculate the, uh, we locate the uh, zero shear height and at that location, we calculate the bending moment. So for this critical section, there is this formula and then depth of critical section below the well cap top is 14.35 meters. So at that place, we calculate the, the bending moment. And then we have provided uh, 106 numbers of tor 16 each, uh, on each face. 106 on the outer face, 106 on the inner face. And for this, for our ULS case, our utilization ratio came to 0.94. The governing case is seismic transverse case. At this case, we have that means almost every the uh, one not six numbers are just about adequate. 
then in the SLS, SLS case, stresses need to be checked for seismic conditions. Uh, no, need not be checked in SLS. Uh, the stresses need not be checked for seismic case. Only dead load SIDL and wind load cases will be checked. And then maximum stress in concrete is 2.5. Against allowable this, this one. And minimum stress in concrete is minus 0.34, less than allowable this thing. That means uh, actually it is an un uncracked se section. Then design of well cap. The well cap is designed as a circular plate fixed to the straining. The load com coming from the pier will act on an effective width of the cap, dispersed width. The bending moment is taken as WL square by 30 and w minus WL square by 60. That means it is semi connected. So this is the positive moment of WL square by 30 and the negative moment of WL square by 20 is considered for the design of the well cap. So this is a typical uh, the drawing. This is a well cap. This is a reinforcement that is put here like this. And then this is the staining. This is, as I told you, that 106 numbers of tor 16 outer and 106 numbers of tor 16 inside it is used. And then this is the section. Then this is the uh, this is a reinforcement at this thing and the cutting. This is a steel cutting edge. This is a reinforcement cutting edge. Is these are all the? I think that they they may not be very clear on the screen. This small screen. Okay. Then this is the general arrangement drawing of uh, this one. And this is the pier cap arrangement. And then these are the bear, bearing arrangement. These are the anti dislodgement seismic arresters. Then we go for a typical uh, pile foundation uh, design. This is a flyover in Visakhapatnam with simply supported spans of 30 meters. The foundation strata is clay up to 6 meters, followed by 2 to 3 meters of SDR and soft hard rock below. Board, so because it's a 6 meters and there's a water also, is fully, uh, it's a waterlock kind of area. So we, 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 need, we, need, we cannot go for, we could not go for open foundation and we have adopted well foundation here. Sorry, pile foundation here. Board cast since you do pile foundations are adopted in soft rock with a socketing of 3D. Four number of 1200 dia piles are adopted in the, for the pier. So here the data is diameter of the circular pier is two meters. Diameter of the piles are 1.24 numbers. Spacing of the piles, 4.5 centers, both directions. Pile cap is six meters by six meters. Uh, depth of the pile cap is 1.5. There's a stipulation in the code that, that this depth of the pile cap should be a minimum of 1.5 times the pile uh, diameter. So that is what we have adopted 1.5 times 1.2, which is 1.8. Length of the pile below pile cap is 15 meters. Load carrying capacity of the pile is 400 tons in the vertical direction and 6 tons in the lateral direction based on 5mm reflection at the scour level. So this is the arrangement, as I told you, four piles at 4.5 meter centers, 4.5, 4.5 meter centers. This is the, this is the two meter dia appear. For the designing of the pile cap, we consider any circular section, we consider the ins inscribed square is taken. For the design purpose, this is the design, everything is done, bending moments and shear forces are calculated for this phase rather than the circular phase. That is what is shown here. Then, uh, same for the pro properties of the pile group are done and uh, I and Z of the pile group is calculated. And then here, governing load case is service case, dead load, SIDL, live load. Typically, we, we, we got 
a vertical load of 10,984 kilonewtons, which, which is about 1,100 tons and longitudinal moment of 433 ton meters and transverse moment of 486 ton meters. For this, we calculated the loads on each piles. So we got a maximum load of uh, 3768, that means 377 tons, and a minimum of about 170 tons. And then to this, sulfate of pile is added. Actually, sulfate of pile, 15 meter dia, 15 meter dia length, and 1.13 is the square meters is the area of, and then only a net net density is taken. Actually, uh, this this pile concrete is replacing the soil. So uh, so only the net area of the extra load is taken and added to the pile cap pile load, and then this is the uh, pile load. Finally, 388.7, less than 390 tons. Uh, say 390 tons, less than 400 tons. So this is the thing. The lateral, lateral load is distributed equally among all the piles. And then once we get the lateral load, using this, uh, these charts, given in IS2911, we calculate the depth of fixity like this, depending on the type of soil and uh, uh, grade of the pile, the uh, concrete grade and uh, E value. We calculate depth of fixity as 6.75. And then fixed end moment for the fixed end pile, this is the lateral force and into L1 plus LF by two. This L1 is up to the scour level and this is LF is below that 6.75. And then with this, again, we take three combinations for the design of the pile. One is maximum vertical load, and one is minimum vertical load, and one is maximum lateral load. These three cases, all these three cases, we calculate ULS uh, values and SLS values for stress check, ULS value for uh, strength check, and SLS rare combination for stress check, concrete stress and steel stress check, and SLS classic permanent for crack bit check. And then again, same using that add sex software, we calculate, uh, we have used 20 numbers of power 20, 0.56%, which is more than 0.4, more than 0.4%. And then we find these are the allowable stresses. Then against this, this is the ad sec, uh, this one. We got, these are the combinations and we got a, uh, this is ULS check. We got a utilization ratio of 0.665. Of course, this means actually, we could re reduce the reinforcement a little bit. We did not do there in that particular case we have not done that similarly sls check then for stresses these are the stresses you got and for crack width you got the stresses like this and then uh, those were uh, within allowable limits then pile cap design so we have done this like this and then as i told then we calculated Similarly, what is the bending moment at the face of the pier? Equivalent rectangle, square pier, as I showed you earlier. There we calculated the equivalent, uh, the bending moment at that face. And then uh, using this formula, we calculate the reinforcement that is re required is seven, 17, uh, sorry, we require 18,000 to 238 square mm. Minimum area 0.15% is 15,000. We have, we have adopted 23,562. That is tower 25 at 125 centers for the pile cap. And in the other, other direction, it is 
not 25, but 125 centers is what is adopted. Then actually, then you require a shear design. Two way design, shear design check is done based on these formulas given in uh, IRC 112. And like this, all these things, we, uh, we got that uh, the shear stress that you get is 1.364 against allowable of 4.16. Hence, the section is okay without shear reinforcement. Otherwise, you require shear reinforcement. Then check for punching shear at d by 2 from the face of the column. That is done like this. And then we find that the punching sh shear stress is 0 0.74, whereas allowable is 1.2. Hence, the section is safe without shear reinforcement for punching. Similarly, punching is set. Similarly, punching is checked for individual piles also. That means now we have checked punching around the pier. And now we need to check for a punching shear uh, at this also. There we have, we have done that also, and we found that it is safe. And this is the typical drawing. And then this is the typical reinforcement drawing. This is it. And this is the peer, peer cap drawing. And then, then, this, then a peer cap design, a typical peer cap design. I think this is a basically corbel design is done based on strut and tie model. So this is a typical thing what we have uh, in one of the projects I have taken. If you see here, the load is coming at this place and this is the pier line. So hardly, uh, you know, just at the pier face only. So this is a typical case of a uh, corbel. So here similarly all the Various load combinations are taken. And then uh, here, this is also since this is a zone four, uh, seismic uh, in three directions is considered. Since you get, you know, so many types, so many number of uh, combinations you get, and so many number of values you get. It's a tedious, uh, the analysis is a tedious thing. Finally, you get a design forces arrived at this. Three, again, here also three combinations, maximum vertical load and corresponding horizontal load, and maximum transverse longit uh, longitudinal force and uh, transverse force and maximum longitudinal force and corresponding. So these three combinations are we have obtained. And then this usual using this uh, method, then Corbell, uh, the dimensions, these are the corbel dimensions we have calculated, and whether h by 2, whether it's a corbel or not, we have done that. And then these are, these, are, these are the forces, these are the shears, and then we have done this check based on this formula, and it is found that it's okay. Then, based on uh, for this uh, main reinforcement, is calculated based like this for different combinations. What is required? We got this 23,000 in one combination, 18,000 in one combination. So this is the governing case, 23,175 is required. We have provided 30,197, which is about 0.48%. Then uh, for the horizontal stirrups are also calculated based on the formula given uh, these things, the BS code, we have done that. And then these are the reinforcement that we got finally. And uh, this is the, this is how this, uh, tip, they are uh, put, these are the horizontal stirrups as well as vertical stirrups are used here. And then this is the typical drawing, how it looks. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. So thank you, sir. That was a very detailed presentation uh, with very good case study. And uh, you have also covered the various aspects of uh, the foundation as well as uh, peer, peer cap, abandonment, abandonment cap. That's really interesting. But I think 
one of the challenging factors that we see is that sometimes you know the type of concrete that has to be used for various foundation like say for example the pile foundation board cast in situ piles you know when uh, i think it's uh, not even not sufficient only really to mention the concrete grade uh, of course the workability is also important uh, because that is one of the things that we have also seen at site uh, highly flowable concrete otherwise there can be tremi choking and all that so whenever tremi concreting is being done used for pier cap so what we see is that there are different types of concrete that is being used for uh, uh, different types of uh, components even within the bridge structure itself you know you have a concrete with high workability and if it's a pre cast bridge then you don't need that much workability so that is where i think uh, we need to go in for a performance based specification as far as concrete is concerned so the concrete mix design also has to be done along with uh, whatever sir has told uh, engineer anjanelu has already detailed it covered so that's what we also do at ramco cements you know we make uh, different cement for different applications like uh, recently we had come with uh, a product for even plastering wherein we measure the air content and water retentivity uh, for the product because that is which is not required for of course uh, cement for concrete so that means uh, we can go in for evaluation of different properties for a particular product depending on the performance that is needed uh, so that is very important so there are a few questions that has been raised. i think uh, one of the main question uh, that was there one of the very interesting question is uh, what about the precautions for a skewed bridge any any puts on that sir uh, precautions uh, is, is just to skewed skewed bridge the design part is a this is challenging thing. and uh, you get lot of uh, twisting moment how to care, take care of that twisting moment uh, is uh, at the corners Uh, there will be uh, against uplift with the twisting moments, and then you need to put a extra reinforcement at the corners. Number one, number two, suppose if you put uh, this uh, bridge on a bearings, you get unequal reactions in the bearings. So that also has to be taken care of. These, these are the ways. Okay. There's a the standard ways of uh, the, doing that. The basically you get uh, twisting moments is one in the superstructure. and unequal re uh, reactions in the bearings in fact sometimes you may need to put uh, one uh, one end you know the bearing which is uh, which to which take only half of the other bearing mm -hmm. so you need to put a different size bearings also along with so design of bearings also very critical in that case unlike a straight bridge right. so because of the twisting moment yes so have you used frp reinforcement in any of the component is uh, under question by uh, shri shri chand telkapalli has asked this question no uh, frp components has it frp reinforcement i am sure i am sorry no no we have not used actually we have used fusion bonded epoxy to the reinforcement whether is meaning that or frp reinforcement frp, FRP reinforcement. reinforcement no no we have not that uh another question by mr sushil is uh, footing fails in tension but we don't want to increase footing size so what is the other alternative that we can do no footing fails because of the no footing fails in tension means on the soil that means it is losing contact okay. no number one it can be designed you, there's no harm if, if it loses contact okay. in fact uh, earlier uh, irc codes it says only if it's a rock it can lose contact but nowadays the, in fact uh, uh, irc 78 new is being is coming which is based on uh, you know now uh, earlier it was all uh, working stress method now uh, uh, this uh, you, it is uh, it is being revised wherein uh, even on soil you can lose uh, area of contact can be lost to some extent so there is no harm if you lose contact now to redistribute the uh, stress and see to that that maximum stress is not exceeded that's all and the uh, very good point uh, mentioned by engineer krishna reddy extensively presented for mono piles the analysis similar to well foundations uh, like taking passive resistance for reaction so that is the point that he has made yes and another point by mr sunil kumar a different height piers has same reduction factor is it 
different height pairs are yeah. same reduction factor means what reduction factor i do not know he has mentioned different yeah. height pairs are same yeah. reduction factor yeah. how is it justified uh, can you just throw some more light on that if mr sunil is there earthquake is it sir uh, is it just yeah. yeah. moment is can you Yes. Sir, small small submission, sir. Vignesh, can you give mic to Sunil Gorle? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sunil Gorle, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, ah. Yes. yes, sir. Let him ask. Yeah. And one, uh, one, uh, one uh, uh, Babu uh, Babu Rao sir, Babu Rao sir is also hand is uh, yeah, is raised. Yes. Please uh, let him. Uh, uh, please take call. Uh, please uh, take a call. Is also. Sure, sir. Sure. Uh, sir, uh, uh, basically we apply this reduction for factor uh, for earthquake design, right? Uh, based on Uh, R factor is four based on the ductility of the pier. So normally uh, the piers are of different heights. The end piers are lower height, which are more stiffer. The middle piers are uh, have, will have a big uh, uh, higher height, larger heights, this uh, which are less stiffer. So, but we apply the same reduction factor for. Uh, yes, that is a, a simple. uh normally if you look at the displacement based design approach yeah th th that's what no no if if the if the thing is so complicated that the height of piers are different even height of foundations the type of foundation are different then you cannot do this simple seismic analysis you need to go for uh, uh, sophisticated analysis that's all then you get a different uh, factors so there is a response reduction is a different thing response reduction is Is a constant thing only. It does not depend on heights and uh, other thing, other things. It only depends on the uh, whether it's a, a cantilever or a, a, a framed pier. It depends on that. But uh, specific yeah. coefficients will depend on a lot of these things. Uh, Baburao sir, I wanted to ask some question. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go on, sir. Mr. Kasiram, congratulations on organizing such a good lecture by Sri Anjaneelu. Good evening, Anjaneelu Baru. Yeah, good evening, sir. I'm making only general comments. Uh, these days, we are doing the elevated corridor for NH44 uh, in Shamshabad, and also Orangal Highway near Upal. Now, all these uh, structures, the elevated so-called elevated corridors, essentially, this National Highway people. we are going for simply supported bridges rather than the continuous bridges which you have very beautifully used in hyderabad i have a feeling that many of the government organizations they do not dare to go for continuous structures you have any comment on that uh it is just a it is just a habit sir hmm. in fact uh, uh, continuous is the not now the nowadays the in thing is uh, integral bridges we have done even yes, uh, yes. yes. Uh, also in pune yes so the, the lot of people are uh, unusually worried about uh, the sinking of supports and all it is yeah. uh, it is not such a big thing sinking of supports and when once you have a uh, see either if you have places like hyderabad and uh, pune there are rocky strata is there even open foundations there is no not much scope for sinking whereas other places also we go for well uh, pile foundations there also again there is not much scope of sinking so uh, actually and to to some extent we cater in the design for the sinking of supports that should take care of actually i, I in think fact, the time has come for to go for uh, uh, not even uh, continuous bridges but uh, integral bridges the major reason why people do do not dare to go for continuous bridges is because they are not very sure of correct foundation investigations they are not very sure of the settlements differential settlements i think that is the major handicap they, they are worried that? about the, yeah yes they are scared about the differential settlements yes so one more point and then i will close uh, you are talking about the well foundations i wanted to ask you if you have also used the classic paper by balwantrao 1957 you remember Well, foundations by Balwantrao. Yes, sir. Uh, have you used that or? Uh... No, no, actually, no. We have not used that. Uh, you see, uh, the after that, based after that, uh, this one, uh, one uh, code also has come. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I don't remember the number, IRC 40 or uh, IRC Well Foundation, yes. Foundation mm. code has come. Even that also now is uh, uh, actually, if you go for uh, as per IRC 112, yes. once you have these hydrodynamic forces and all, yes. uh, that, uh, that gives higher and we have used, used based on IRC 78 and 112 only we have used. Of course, Balwantara was 1965. It was yes. very popular for almost 30, 40 years. Yes, yes, yes. True. We have not, that is not used now. Nowadays, it's not. Thank used. you, Mr. Ajay. I hope your son also is helping you in your work. Oh, yes, sir. He is very much in my office. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. It was a nice discussion. I think a lot of challenges are there uh, in execution also for foundation. And I think design aspects also should care, take care of the practical aspects, you know, the difficulties that come up with uh, the field uh, challenges. Because, you know, even when we go in for well foundation, <clears throat> there are always challenges of the tilt and shift and all those things. So as rightly pointed out in the presentation, we need to adopt the right kind of foundation, uh, depending on the soil conditions, depending on the type of bridge that we are going to have. And it was beautifully presented using the case study. I think that was one of the interesting aspect. And uh, uh, Anjali sir has also covered uh, about the various uh, combination of loads that can be taken. I think each and every aspect of the design has been covered. Uh, one more observation is that in NHA works also more number of continuous spans are extensively used as concessionaires as option for design even in EPC projects. Different designers adopt different types is the remark made by engineer Surya Devra just one day. I think uh, that's also a very nice remark that he has made. So I think more number of continuous plans are also extensively used. That is a point that he's trying to make. So thank you so much for that remark. It was a very good presentation and a very good participation. Uh, you know, in spite of everybody's busy <clears throat> schedule, I think all of you could make it. Uh, I think before closing, there are a number of chats that is coming up. I think we will take one more. Is there any additional load combination? Just a minute. Yeah, is there any additional load combination required for pier cap design in rotary near curved location? Uh, your comment, sir, for that? It's a difficult. Uh, no, no, curved location, you get, uh, you know, extra lateral force. That also okay. has to be taken care of in the design of the... Okay. And uh, Mr. Anand RV has also appreciated the presentation, the knowledge sharing uh, session, subject well presented, elaborated, quite enriching. Uh, thank you, Association of Consulting Civil Engineers, uh, Engineer Krishna Reddy, Engineer Bhima Rao, Engineer Kashi Ram for having organized this uh, wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Any closing remarks from any of you? <laughs> yes, sir, uh, just one thing, sir. Just one thing. Yeah. Just one minute, uh, one closing remark from... Yes, sir. Continue, sir. Yeah. Uh, no, if any young engineers are interested, right now, a well foundation work is going on in the right in the city itself, near uh, uh, Shilpa layout. Because uh, this is a rare chance. If anybody is interested, we can uh, just uh, arrange to have a look at it. In fact... I think that's whole, a good thing, yeah. whole work will be over. Uh, within the next month. If at all anybody is interested to see, they should go now itself. Yeah, sir, I think a lot of I think civil engineers would be interested in that. Yeah. Sir, one small request. On behalf of ACC, we'll have a small tour or we'll have a small uh, arrangement one vehicle. Uh, we'll go all together. Some seniors may come also. Not the young, not only the young. Seniors may come also, sir. Okay. If you give permission, we'll have a plan. No, 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 there should be no problem. We can. And uh, one more small request, sir. Can you share that uh, PPT, sir, please? Is it, if it is possible? Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, oh, yes. sorry. Vignesh, please collect the PPT. Yeah, I think uh, okay, Vignesh can collect the PPT and uh, uh, possibly, you know, uh, give it to ACC for onward transmission because there were many requests for many of them for the soft copy of the presentation. So thank you so much, sir, for that. Uh, a uh, kind gesture from your side. I think uh, that was a good knowledge sharing and uh, many of them will take it. Uh, especially such kind of seminars are useful for budding civil engineers as well as uh, for all of us, uh, I think, to enrich our knowledge and uh, maybe brush up our fundamentals once in a while. Uh, very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you so you, much. Uh, I request uh, Bimra, sir. Yeah. Uh, Ramo. <coughs> yeah. Sir, Anil Garki, special thanks uh, for... Uh, 
accepting this you know since four months we are following it up uh, thank you anil garu for uh, taking time out Yeah. And uh, I told Kashiram, don't leave Anjanil Garu until he presents a presentation to our members. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> and thank you so much for your valuable time. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Rajkumar Garu, for your uh, good wishes. And uh, uh, today, uh, with my we are uh, from the ACC, uh, Secretary Bhimrao, on behalf of the ACC, I am thanking to uh, our today's uh, uh, Anjanil Garu on the beautiful lecture. <clears throat> on the foundations of uh, foundation and designs of the bridges so <coughs> totally totally within one and a half hour totally covered of the designing of the designing and the basics and the foundations and uh, other important points like bridge design detailing different foundations shapes and shapes of piers different and advant advantages piers and shapes shapes of piers frame of piers abutments And peers, peer caps, single peer with cap with single cap, single peer, short spans and long spans as per the required design designs, and uh, cantilevers, beams, bearings, peer caps, and uh, uh, codal provisions, cable gables, shapes of the different shapes of the the uh, the, the caps, uh, gables, and the, the reinforcement details. Arrangements and uh, the cable cables, the open foundation rod status how it will be, and in the open foundation how it will be in the reverse how it will be and the rock surface how it will be the beautifully sir has been explained about this the designs, and also sir is especially some important point has been taken the dead loads, and the uh, um, temperature loads, and uh, uh, temperature shrinkage loads. the force how it acts and how it will be calculated how it acts in the movements so beautifully explained the two types of the table form and uh, is going to very nicely is are explained and uh, the difference as <coughs> for the reinforcement uh, area of the reinforcement uh, maybe for the generally for the apartment it will be maximum 6% and uh, minimum is 8% whereas in the ps sir has told that's only a uh, 3% is a minimum sir has taken some of the ps is uh, 0.4 percent and 0.6 percent to 0.4 percent also sir said. So we will explain sir in all respects even loads also wind load, wind load and uh, live load, seismic loads. This all things sir is beautifully explained. I request sir to so many madam uh, people they are practicing only uh, structural designs of the apartments, individual houses. Only less people in Andhra and Telangana togetherly. Very less people are there in the bridge designs. Sir, if sir interested, <coughs> not sir interested. If the students are the the practicing values, practicing in closer times of structural engineers interested, I request sir to give some training. Those are budding people, so at least our uh, designing of the the bridges will be allowed for the next generation people. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you very much for giving students this much of opportunity, and for the <coughs> ACC and uh, gracing this uh, today's presentation. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Namaskar. On behalf of the ACC, thank you, sir. Namaskar. Uh, over to uh, what of thanks to I request uh, ACC Treasurer Mr. Ramesh, please conclude this today's meeting with what of thanks. Namaskar. Yeah. Good evening, all. respected chief guest and today's eminent speaker engineer anjanil garu pragati consultants hyderabad and other dignitaries in this webinar hello fraternity engineers it gives me immense pleasure to perform the pleasant duty of proposing vote of thanks on behalf of the accii hyderabad center i convey our sincere and profound thanks to today's eminent speaker engineer Anjanil Garu for provided his august presence and delivered wonderful lecture on a very important topic of design of bridge foundation and substructure. I also thanks today's technical technical webinar sponsors, the Ramco Cements Limited Management and Engineer Anil Kumar Pillai, General Manager, and Engineer Vignesh, Deputy Manager, Technical Services, the Ramco Cements Limited, and all others. 
for your continuous support to ACCI Hyderabad Center. I also thank you for our chairman, ACC Hyderabad Engineer Kashi Ramgaru, Secretary Engineer Bhim Rao Garu for making it convenient and preceded over the webinar. I convey our thanks to the fellow fraternity engineers, management committee members, advisors of ACCI Hyderabad, and all participants in this webinar. Once again, I extend my gratitude to our honorable eminent speaker, chief guest engineer Anjanel Garu to make our take out your time for his busy schedule to grace this webinar. I thank you all for your attention. With this, we will end the webinar. Thank you all. Good night. Signing off from Mesh, President ACC Hyderabad. A warm greetings uh, during the festival location and a very happy advanced new year to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you so thank much. much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Anna. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Bimrao, sir. Thank you, Anjali, sir. Thank you. Bimrao, sir. Sir. Okay, Rozu, I am going to say that you are going to say that you are going to say that you are going to say that. No, no, no. Definitely. Speaker, sir. Anjali, sir. Speaker, sir. Anjali, sir. Anjali, sir. The offering of our team, are unable to do that. Definitely, we have to yes. go through, sir, and take we'll the go, photograph. We'll go and we'll meet, sir. In and the we ACC group. Yeah, definitely, sir. Yes. Sorry, it's very... That's why I'm asked. <laughs> I requested before this our commencement of the, this our, our webinar, I requested, sir, to give the training to some good people, good structural designs. Which are very we will have that also, sir. We'll have, we'll go and talk with him. We'll have two-day training along with the... Uh, Will some uh, collect the, some fees from the students or some the engineers or some consultants? We'll uh, we'll discuss with that also. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Anil, sir. Thank, thank, you, you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Namaste. I'm signing off. Yeah.